Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Eye of the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. So recently I had the very great pleasure of reading Salamandastron, the fifth Redwall novel. After Mariel, I felt like a sense of like getting bored with the formula and wanted to take a break from it. And honestly, I was having problems like getting all these books together and like really taking the time to read them. You know, I was super busy. So like I, I did not get around to reading Salamander Strand for a really long time, even though I really wanted to. And once I got around to it, it was, it was okay. Like, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It's not my fa new favorite Redwall novel. Uh, I think it's probably the most mid I've reread at this point. Uh, I've read the first five at this point. Uh, Mariel is my least favorite, and uh, this is probably my fourth or third. I, I don't know. Like, I'll have to do a comprehensive, like, list video at some point once I go through all these books again. But I overall really enjoyed my the book right like the formula is straightforward you know it's it's a little has a little bit too many a few too many characters i think the conflict doesn't really isn't really all that interesting a lot of the characters don't really feel all that fleshed out but it is like standard or red wall stuff you know and after reading b stars i found myself really strongly appreciating that more than I ever have before. That's actually something that, like, I've noticed going back to this, is that, like, reading Redwall again, after reading something as degenerate, disgusting, and depraved as Beastars was, like, you really get a sense that, like, Redwall is actually very traditional and very based, you know? Like, it's so weird, like... Looking at these two IPs coming from two different, uh, two completely different people from two different parts of the world, uh, you know, a based British man, uh, Brian Jacks, versus that complete like nepotistic, like, uh, sh like complete spurred Paru Itagaki, like. Comparing these two things, you really get a sense that like Brian Jacks had like a very great vision for the franchise. He really he really valued his audience. He was really like constantly evolving and trying new things. Whether it worked or not, he always like moved on to something else, right? He was always evolving, always trying new things, and always willing to like kind of depict things the way they were, right? He managed to kind of adequately to describe a world in Red Wall and managed to stick with it, right? He managed to show us very early on uh, in the first book that vermin are not to be trusted. And so, therefore, going forward, that the stereotype that vermin are evil makes perfect sense in the world of Red Wall. You know, it all fits nicely together. You see why people from Red Wall don't really want to associate with vermin and why it's always a big deal when one, when one or two are allowed in. Like, we see, like, the repercussions of that when, like, a character, Brother Hal, is killed, and, you know, the characters rightfully just condemn the vermin for what they did, right? You know, there's, like, a very natural kind of progression. You know, people treat you in certain ways depending on how you act and how you behave like they 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 are judging you based on your character based on your nature right and there is nothing absolutely nothing wrong with that b stars on the other hand uh, being as dysfunctional as it is really wants to pretend that there's something wrong with the predator versus prey aspect they want to pretend that there's something wrong with the fact that lugosi wants to fuck wants to eat that rabbit you know whose name i won't even remember because i hate her that much like it, it's it's haru <laughs> but like i, I want to forget the rabbit's name because like every time i complain about this i'm just like oh that rabbit like, you know, they really want to, like, make this weird, weird dysfunctional society where, like, everyone wants to pretend that there's something they're not. That, like, peace between these two groups or, like, any any of these uh, animals, actually, is, like, is possible or even really desirable, right? It's like if you had the entire Abbey of Redwall, like, constantly opening its gates to vermin all the time. Like, it doesn't make sense. There's no reason for them to do that. By, like, the second book of this happening, you would have just been like, why, why are they doing this? This is so, like, this is so stupid. You know, we all know what vermin are like. Why does this keep happening over and over again? But it doesn't. You know, that's the thing. And that's what makes Redwall based, is that it understands that... The vermin are treated the way they are for a reason, right? There is a very good reason why the based and red pill denizens of Red Bull Abbey do not let vermin in their walls. There is a very good reason why Earthstripe, the Badger Lord of Salamandastron, in a completely different part of the world, has the same exact view around the same time because he knows, you know, he is a victim from vermin, right? The, the, ver the guy going to... 
take the mountain's treasure, killed his parents, right? He he got his he got separated from his brother. Like, how would you? Why would you ever think that, like, oh man, Farago the assassin? I I bet he would have been a good person if he just was raised in Red Bull Abbey. No, there are plenty of normal people all over the world who are perfectly respectable and willing to help the protagonist out. They meet a hedgehog, they meet the shrews, they meet like all these people who are like willing to come together and like do legitimately good things for one another. But vermin are not those people, right? That's what I that's what I <laughs> that's what vermin are. They are just pure corrupt evil and they deserve absolutely to be treated the way they do. And, you know, after having, like, struggled through Beastars so much, and it's, like, complete refusal to kind of, like, acknowledge, you know, some, a similar kind of thing. Actually, in, in Beastars, I would say it's even worse. It's even more ridiculous, right? Because, like, there is never a situation in any Redwall book in which we see them, like, uh, actually taking a snake, for example, like an actual predator, right? In Beastars, you're, like, walking around all there, out there all the time. Like, if Beastars takes place in, like, the the far-off future of Redwall, I, like, I, it's the most... <laughs> society devolved this badly it's just it's just like wow it is unbelievable just how like just how like distinct these two are and it's not meant to be a parallel to uh real world uh uh real world issues at all right this is like just an organic natural thing of just depicting how you know societies behave and in like the thing about b stars the thing that always that maybe hate Beastars, I think, more than anything, is that it desperately thinks that, like, <sighs> complete, completely, like, undermining, like, everyone is the way to, like, go to building the ideal society, right? Like, you know, uh, the prey need to, like, wander around with predators. Like, predators need to, like, restrain themselves around their natural prey. Like, you have this situation where, like, you know, bears have to, like, take drugs to suppress their strength, but oh, yeah, because most, most creatures aren't as strong as bears. Like, it's stupid. It is just... It is so ridiculous. It's so contrived. Like, how exactly is anyone expected to live that way? Like, how exactly is anything in the world of Beastars, like, meant to be ideal or, like, meant to be, like, something that, like, people would actually agree to? You know what I mean? Like, it, it just doesn't make any sense at all. Redwall really understands traditional values and what makes a society function, right? So, and reading this again, like, I really grew to appreciate that. I really found myself, you know, even though the book was mid, right, for a Redwall book, like, I didn't care for it like others, I found myself, like, really surprisingly invested in just being like, oh, wow, like, just look at how these people at Redwall interact with each other. Just how, look how, how they like, take care of each other, you know, when when they're sick, or how they, like, you know, um, make peace with, like, uh, the birds or whatever, and how they go out on adventures to, like, recover herbs, and how they, like, you know, are have their own history and culture like why would you ever like want to ruin that like what the red wall people have like why would you like if you wanted something like that for yourself like instead of going to take it like a bunch of vermin you should just build something like that yourself like it, it's just it's it's so so absurd i think the lengths that b stars went to try and like pretend that existence in and of itself is suffering you know trying to be something you're not trying to go against your very nature is something to be like admired and like revered honestly venerated you know like in the entirety of b stars is like basically about lugosi trying to bang this rabbit or like trying to confusing his feelings for like wanting to eat this rabbit with like feelings of attraction and then like never actually getting over that like it, nobody is convinced that it's going to work nobody right you know, I didn't even finish the manga, and I can tell you that. It's like, it's so hollow, and it's so lifeless, and it's so just out of touch with reality. You know, it's, I, I see this a lot with, like, female liberal writers, where they try and, like, pretend that they're uh, progressive, and that they're trying to do something, like, out of the mold, and, like, something edgy, like, you know, J.K. Rowling trying to pretend that, like, Dumbledore was gay, for example. Like, that's a really good example of this kind of behavior, where they make all these decisions trying to, like, be progressive, trying to, like, 
paint this like image of this like ideal liberal society and then like accidentally create something like really dysfunctional and just completely pointless right like b stars when you like look at the society as a whole when you look at like just what is hap what the world of b stars is actually like you just find yourself just being like baffled at the current state of things like this is not a place that would actually exist like I kept reading B stars, like expecting her to like bring it all together and really make this like world feel lived in and alive. But like everything I saw, every baffling decision, every like attempt at justifying like the the behavior of certain characters and like the attitudes that people have, like it all just comes together to create a complete mess. You know, like it, it, it's just like why is it just not like Redwall? Why can we not just have like this? A world that doesn't that doesn't try to pretend it's something it's not. You know, there's a reason that the people of Redwall Abbey leave the way live the way they do, but in the world of B stars, there is no such there is no rationalizing the state of the state of things in B stars. Um, B Redwall is just unbelievably based, right? You know, th this is one of those things I've uh, I've uh, come to realize over the past couple of years. Uh, you know, as I read some of these like ultra progressive works, uh, usually by accident, like it really makes you appreciate like the things you didn't really appreciate like growing up. Because when I first read Wall Redwall, I thought like the setting of Redwall was actually boring, and I was just like, okay, why? When are we get to get the fighting? Where's the adventure? Like, oh man, he's fighting a snake. This is so cool. Like, you get a sense for, like, you know, there's a reason the characters are fighting, but it just comes off as boring. Like, why do you need pages and pages of, like, characters talking about what they're going to make for the feast or, like, uh, what they're going to name the season or, like, you know, oh, we haven't had a badger maid in a while. Like, uh, a mother badger. Yeah, mother badger. <laughs> it's badger mom, I, I think it is. Like, I said maid. Uh, I think it's mother. But anyway, um... Like, you, you think that stuff is boring and doesn't really, like, relate to the whole plot at all, but, like, on this reading, in this book, like, I found myself really, really appreciating that. I found myself really valuing what the book did for me, like, purely in association with Beastars. Like, I hated Beastars so much, it makes me love Redwall that much more.